Insperity presents the Small Business Advocate Show with Jim Blassingame, brought to you by FedEx, CareerBuilder.com, and Palo Alto Software. This is a copyrighted production of Small Business Network, Inc., all rights reserved. Well, after the hour, thank you very much for hanging out with me. Thanks for being part of my day. I'm Jim Blasting Game. You're listening to the Small Business Advocate Show, and I'm glad you're here. Michael Salzman's here, too, ladies and gentlemen. Michael is a member of our Brain Trust. He is a research fellow for the Employment Policy Policies Institute. He's here to talk to us about a potential impending increase in minimum wage. Michael Salzman, welcome back to the show. Hey, it's good to be here, as always. Good to have you back. Uh, Michael, let's let's review just a little bit where where the the, the origins of, of minimum wage and the and the effect of minimum wage. You know, a lot of people think minimum wage was created for some you know some uh, uh, reason to to help people have a you know raise their incomes for some altruistic reason, et cetera, et cetera. The truth is the minimum wage was created to protect jobs in Massachusetts, uh, to protect uh, textile jobs in Massachusetts from cheaper labor in the South back in the back in the twenties and thirties. So it was it was a political reason. It wasn't it wasn't for to help out anybody except to save jobs. It was a protectionist move, wasn't it, Michael? Yeah, you know, in many ways, you know, we think of the minimum wage today as what it is today, which is primarily a, a sort of low-skilled or entry-level wage, uh, but that wasn't always the case. Yeah, the minimum wage used to be a, uh, a wage that applied to more higher-skilled industries. Textiles is a good mm-hmm. example, uh, manufacturing, uh, mining. Mm-hmm. And so what, what happened is, is you, you did. You had some employees who were uh, less skilled in those industries for whom the minimum wage um, excluded them from employment. Uh, the sort of the unfortunate thing is that the minimum wage is skill is still excluding less skilled employment less skilled people from employment today, but it's right. just doing so I think in, in 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 a different way since the wage you know it, there's no minimum wage in mining or manufacturing anymore because everyone there is making more than it and so it really applies right. to the people in those industries where it sort of bites where they are making that wage. Right, exactly, and uh, and and of course you know the and the, and minimum wage. Is it would be would be fine if it were an entry, a true entry level wage, and it was designed to help people who were truly entry level, like young people, people who had no skills or anything like that. But when it gets to the level that it is right that, that it is right now, and that, that that certain members of Congress are proposing, now we're getting into a, a level where it's 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 getting beyond the entry level. It's getting more into the skill level range, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, and you know the, the interesting thing about the, uh, sort of the most recent proposal, which is basically it's for a nine dollar and eighty cent minimum wage, which would then rise with inflation. And proponents of the wage like to talk about how many millions of people would be impacted. And they're right. A lot would be impacted in the same way that if you set the minimum wage at twenty dollars, even more people would be impacted. But just because you're impacting eighteen or twenty million people, all that means is you're just you're affecting more and more industries, more and more people up along the wage distribution, and there's a greater chance that there's going to be some sort of unintended consequence because of the policy. Well, there are people who are are single, you know, single parents. Especially single mothers who are who are working in low skilled, low paid jobs. There are people like that who the minimum wage proponents single out, but those people can get help in other ways. Or if they're not getting enough help, let's help them in other ways. But let's let the government do that. Let's let the government spread that across all Americans, not just impose it uh, this this extra money that the gov- that these politicians want these folks to have not just impose that cost on the businesses because as you know michael when small businesses have to pay this it's very difficult it's almost impossible for us to pass those costs on and consequently you and i know both know businesses who've gone out of business 
or they just choose to buy technology that prevents them from having to have those employees at all. Yeah. I mean, I think that solution you proposed there is the right one. You know, it, it varies slightly based on what year you look at the statistics at, but it's, it's generally it's some number under 10% of the people who benefit from a higher minimum wage are single parents with children. And that's why we have policies in place, both on the federal and the state level, um, like the earning income tax credit that boosts their income. And it's not an insubstantial boost. I mean, we're talking about an additional, you know, depending on the number of kids you have, it can be, you know, six or $7,000 in addition to your paycheck. And so, you know, that, that is effectively a minimum wage increase and, and even more of a minimum wage increase really than, than uh, you know, than, than with this new policy going into place, especially in some of these states where they have the state supplement. Uh, the nice thing about those policies is they're targeted. Uh, they they work through the tax code, and they just benefit the people we're trying to help. Well, and the and the, the politicians who continue to push minimum wage increases, they know they can't increase those benefits without raising taxes, and they know that's a, that's a, a, a non-starter. So by beating up on business owners, by by you know doing the bleeding heart argument. And then essentially what they do is they tax business owners for this, for this extra minimum wage rather than raising it, appropriating it through the government, don't they? Sure. Well, my great frustration of these debates, is, it's, it's twofold. The first is that, uh, you know, as, as part of the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, the earned income tax credit was expanded substantially. And so, first of all, the idea that the government hasn't given people a raise, low-income people a raise in the last few years – uh, is just hogwash because they did. They got a substantial raise because of the stimulus. The second thing is, and I think you and I talked about this before, is that people who are in the minimum wage aren't stuck there. Um, you know, the majority are That's getting right. a raise in their first 12 months on the job. And so the idea that they're just sort of toiling at the same wage, waiting for some well-intentioned bureaucrat to come along and boost their paycheck is just a complete fiction. Well, and it also... Uh, it also dis is designed victimization. I mean, that's, they act like these people are victims, as you say. In America, that's not how it works. In America, you can work, you can, you can, you can learn, you can show initiative, you can get promoted, you can earn your own raise. And see, that's we, we're, that's what this country is. It's based on a, mer on a meritocracy principles, and and the more the government gets involved, folks, and the, and this is this is the the decision, this is the choice that we have. In America, right now, between now and November sixth, which way is the is America going to go? Are we going to break towards the, having the government take care of us and, and solve our problems? Or are we going to break toward individual merit, working on our own, earning our own opportunity, which we can do in America? That's the decision we have to make. Quick break, twenty after. I'm Jim Blessing, and when we come back, we're going to talk about what would it take, what would happen, what would cause. Minimum wage to be raised again. Who's in, who's in favor of this? Who's proposing this? Stay with us. We'll be right back. Insperity presents the Small Business Advocate Show with Jim Blassingame, brought to you by FedEx, CareerBuilder.com, and Palo Alto Software. This is a copyrighted production of Small Business Network, Inc., intended for the private use of our audience, except as otherwise provided by copyright law. All other copying, redistribution, or publication without prior written consent is prohibited. All rights reserved.